the issue with that that I see is a lot of those symbols are very similar. Right. And it's very difficult to tell when they're all jumbled up together. Yep, absolutely. So what. And so at, at that point, I mean, it, it definitely looks a whole lot clearer on my screen. I will say that. And so it... <laughs> Yeah, it does look a lot better. If it came down to it, could you could you mess with the size of the window? Yeah, you can make this you can make this window as, as big as you want. And it'll adjust the scale accordingly. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing too is that this is scanned from a paper copy that was probably photocopied from another paper copy. <laughs> and so every time we, we duplicate this thing, the quality gets worse and worse. Um, if we're actually taking an image out of a digital paper then the quality is usually fairly good. But you're absolutely right. I mean, when the points get jumbled up together, you basically just have to do the best you can at distinguishing what's what. Right. Might be advantageous to have either a, a copy sitting in front of you, the yes. actual paper printed out, or something so you can compare the two. Yeah, so I you think can you're clarify, right. Clarify um, what points what. Yeah, so you don't have any error with dimensions. And, you know, worst case scenario is that we still end up digitizing all the data. Ideally, we would like to be able to segregate the data in terms of, okay, well, let's only look at people who are going to scour depth around a square pile that's oriented in line with the flow, with the broad face perpendicular to the flow. And let's just let's look at that and see if there's a, a broader model that fits all of that data um, in terms of let's, and, and instead of let's just throw everything in, square columns, round columns, you know, elliptical columns, everything into a data set and see if there's a generic model that fits everything. It's probably not going to happen. And so it's nice if we can keep the information from each image as, as much as possible. And so essentially what this is like is adding metadata to your data file, either in terms of a separate text file that, that always hangs around with your digitized data, or if it's in the same file, or if we put this into an Excel, uh, spreadsheet and we have two different like workbooks or sheets in the same file. And one sheet could be the metadata where I write the citation for the paper, the figure number, some information about the figure, and even probably copy and paste or insert that image that we used into that file so that we always have a copy of it with our digitized data. That would probably be best case scenario. And so we would basically clip through this thing all of our points just clicking merrily along, triangle, triangle. I don't know why I'm looking up there. I could look at my computer screen and do this much better. And actually, it, you can't see it because the resolution is so bad up on the screen, but it's actually putting a green cross on top of every triangle that I digitize. And so I would just go through there and do all of my triangles that I can possibly find. And that's actually Jesus. all of them crosshairs on there. Two little green crosses. Yeah. And that might be something if, if you're willing to go into the digitize.m routine, you can probably change the color of the cross and the, the, the weight of it and even the symbol type if you wanted to. Um, it's been so long since I've done anything in MATLAB that I honestly have forgotten pretty much everything. So I'm going to be relearning some of this too. I know enough just to get me in trouble and do the digitized thing, but, but other than that, I'm, I'm still over. So basically, that, I think that concludes all of the upright triangles uh, that I can see in here. This is a round circle with a line through it. The other triangles either are upside down to the left or to the right. And so that would essentially do it for that. So once you figure out, finish out a series of data, uh, you could come back over to your window. Oh, and well, to finish it, you would click to the left of the um, origin or somewhere below the horizontal axis. So if I click over here, that's going to go ahead and close that out. Now it says enter a file spec, basically a name, to save the data to. The default is not to save. So we would actually probably like to save this to a data file. Uh, that way we can import it into Excel spreadsheet and, and start a database. Uh, if you forget to do it and, and just get really happy and excited and press enter, it's not the end of the world because this data is still going to be in your, your workspace. 
So you can always cut and paste that out or, or at the very worst. I mean, it's only seven points that we digitized or something. You could just type that in the spreadsheet real quick. Um, but we'll go ahead and save this to a name, and this will be, uh, let's call it figure four upright closed triangles dot txt, maybe. Uh, in our format to save the data. Oh, this is... Um, this is a format in terms of uh, digits. And so what this is is uh, percent 6.2F is F stands for floating point or floating number. And so it's going to give us six complete digits and two digits on the right hand side of the decimal point. And so we'll just go ahead and say, OK. Digits have more data from this graph. Uh, you could do. I would see it saved it to our file. It said six, six pairs saved to file figure four upright closed triangles.txt. Um, you can just continue on and do, all right, yes, let me go back and now let's do all the triangles to the left. Clicky, 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 clicky. And I'm not going to grab that one because it's at infinity. So let me just click outside of the origin, and default is no save. That's fine. I don't want to save it. Digitize more data now. And so let me do a issue a door command from the command line. And let's see if I've got some new files in there. Yeah, so I've got figure four, right closed triangles, figure four, upright closed triangles. So I would probably do this as my next step. I would go to Excel. And I would do open desktop. I'm in the digitizing. Oop. We gotta select files of type all files. And we're gonna select figure four right closed triangles. Well, we'll do upright closed triangles. That, that was the file we did first. Select open. It's gonna give us the text import wizard. Uh, it's fixed alignment, fixed width. You can see the columns of data there. Click next. It automatically splits the data into columns correctly, so that looks okay. Click next. Column data format, we can just leave it as general general. We want to change that and just click finish. Alright, so we've got points one, two, three, four, five, six, x value, y value. So maybe the thing to do would be to come in immediately and insert a row. Mm -hmm. Insert sheet row and do pair and then do kc and do s not on d so that way i remember what the heck this is and then either in this same worksheet i could come down here and make a note um, and then use a new tab for a another series from the same image and then just keep all the digitized data from a figure in one workbook. Um, and that might be the, the cleanest way of organizing. And so maybe the thing to do would just be make a new sheet over here that I can drag to the front, and we could call this like metadata. And here I would say that this is, I know that this is a paper by Fred So and somebody else <laughs> of year something. And this was figure four. And we're going to have, I'm going to insert a picture from my desktop digitizing folder. I'm going to insert the image here that we digitized. That way I can keep this handy just in case we ever need to refer back to it. And so I would probably maybe name this, um, give this some sort of characteristic name that's make sense about the data series that we collected. So this might be uh, 141 millimeter um, 90 degrees to the flow or something like that.